What's up everybody, Ryder Kick here with another episode of Let's Build a Deck. As you can see, we have Dayusha, the Mad of Justice. Once again, meaning we are going to be looking at car a card fight vanguard deck. Today we're looking at the Enigman deck, also known by some as the Ultraman deck. And today's going to be a bit longer than usual because we're looking at two builds, since the deck actually has quite a bit of changes from the original build However, because Blue Storm Armada or Set 8 has come out, the deck has uh, been altered rather greatly to fit the new cards in it. So sit back and let's build a deck. Well, starting off with the Grade Zeros is our starting Vanguard. And first part of the ride chain, Enigman Flow, who is a 5,000 that says whenever the Grade 1 Enigman Ripple comes into play and rides him, you can go search your deck for the Grade 2 Enigman Wave. Um, really not too much to say about him. He doesn't come out, which is a bit of a problem. So we're just going to move on. We're going to go with our first four stands, which is the vanilla stand trigger, Cosmo Fang. We play four of them. Then we play the effect trigger, which is the strand trigger, which is Guide Dolphin. Guy Dolphin is 4,000, and he's good because he adds power to the deck, or adds power to the main van main vanguard, rather, by putting him from play into the soul and giving the vanguard 3,000 power. That's very important in this deck because of the grade 3's abilities. Next, we play four stand triggers, uh, Justice Cobalt. We well, don't know what Cobalt's supposed to be based off of. I'm gonna say, uh, it's one of those random hero beasts from Tokusatsu. I really don't know what he's supposed to be off of. But Need Thrust of Justice, and it's our critical trigger for the deck. We also have four of Dissection Monster Kaizen. He comes from set 8. We, the prior heal triggers were set, uh, were of course Justice Rose. Uh, being it an alien themed deck, I just decided to put in Kaizen. And that's it for the grade zeros. So the sti still typical 17 card grade zero loadout. And we'll move on to grade ones. Grade ones are of course Enigman Ripple. Who uh, gets 1,000 power, 2,000 power, excuse me, for him being ridden on top of a Nigman flow. He has the ability where if you call him separately to the rear guard, you can discard a grade 3 and go get Storm from the hand. We, of course, play 4 of him because it is part of the ride chain build. Uh, next, as usual, you'll be seeing these guys a lot in the coming videos, although I think there's only one more until the new set comes out. That is, of course, our perfect guards, Diamond Ace, and Karen Roy Daisy, our staple vanilla grade 8. Um, do you run for them? There's only three. I just dropped the fourth one. I don't want to bend down and take up a lot of time to get the card. Um, and finally, for our grade threes, Commander Laurel. Commander Laurel is kind of the key card of the deck. Um, he enables the uh, Dimension Police's big gambit of if you retire four rear guards, including uh, Laurel himself, you can ready the Vanguard. The Vanguard still keeps his twin drive or drive check, meaning you can do a twin drive with your generic grade ones and grade twos while he's out, or you can quad drive at the uh, sacrifice of your entire rest of your board. Still, he's good. The draw engine he makes is a phenomenal. The being able to swing your vanguard twice is really good because most of the time people don't guard the vanguard early game, so really good card. You only run three of him though because he is only a power of a grade zero. We move on to our grade twos. Grade twos are Enigman Wave. 
Enigman Wave is course gets 1,000, bring him up to 10,000 if you ride him on Ripple. And he has the ability of well being on Vanguard if before your attack step, or at the beginning of your attack step rather, if this unit is 14,000 or greater, he gets the ability to say if he hits a Vanguard, you draw. Um, more often than not, you're not going to use that ability. He's just going to be there to make Enigma Storm function. Um, that's really all there is to him. Um, we run four of them because we got to hit him to make Storm big. And we have four Cosmo Beak. Cosmo Beak or Megazord. Guest starring in this Counter Blast 2 when it comes into play. Give your Dimension Police of your choice 4,000 power for the turn. So naturally, you come into play, you Counter Blast, and you give it to the Vanguard. That automatically fulfills both. Wave's requirements, though, once again, don't do wave, just do storm. Storm's requirements, and get extra power before you even start the fight. And finally, we run two Super Dimensional Robo Die Ladies, because she is a 9,000 on hit effect, which says if she hits the Vanguard, you can choose one of your Dimension Police, which will once again be the Vanguard, because Dimension Police's theme is center row or the Vanguard row, and give them 3,000 power. So you swing with it first, if you want to. Um, she'll prob She's probably going to be in the sacrificial column in front of Laurel. We run two of her. Next, we have the Father of Ultra, or Enigma and Storm, who, if you have Wave in the Soul, he becomes an 11,000, so he's comparable to the Cross Rides, ridden naturally, and some grade threes. Uh, 11,000 is just a good defense number. Um, he also has, if he is 15,000 or higher prior to combat, he automatically gets uh, plus one critical the entire turn. So if you make him big before he even swings, um, he de deals two damage as opposed to one, so you're getting two cards, you're dealing two damage, and once again with Laurel out, that could potentially be four damage and four cards. And finally, we have the promo Electro Star Combination Cosmo Great. It's kind of like Dayusha's space cousin made of robot beasts as opposed to cards. Just Voltron. He's Voltron. Um, he is pretty much the equivalent of Cosmo Beak. He actually shares the same ability. Uh, Counter Blast 2, when this unit is placed on the rear guard, you can pay the cost. If you do, uh, choose another of your dimension please, and he gets 4,000 at the end of the turn. So if you don't ride Cosmic Beak, Cosmo Beak, or once you've used Cosmo Beak for that turn, and you still got two more damage, we have... Uh, uh, Cosmo Grit to come in and once again power it up. So stick around. We're, I'm going to switch out some of the cards for the new deck and the new format and we'll be right back. And we're back. So first off we're looking at grade zeros again and as I just slapped down we instead of float we have Warrior of Destiny Die. If you looked at my article on HenshinJustice.com which the link for that site will be in the comments. Please go to it. I write there. I like it there. It's nice. Um, die is 4,000 power. Whenever you ride anybody on him, he moves out, which is automatically the first thing that's better than uh, Nigman Flow. Uh, you're not killing your field right off the bat. Uh, you maintain the same level of presence. He is 1,000 power less, so he's only 4,000. That's okay. Uh, the other th good thing he does is he helps ensure your deck even further. Uh, that you get your rides because you can counter blast one, put him in the soul, and look at the top five cards of your deck for a grade three. You can show someone and get it. So, yeah, die's good. Um, I don't particularly care for grade three searchers. The only ones I'm really partial to are die and spark kid dragoon in my Nerdakami deck, but that's another deck for another time. Grade zeros, uh, nothing really too much has changed, but we'll take a look at it again anyways. Uh, we were of course running 
for Kazans, because it is an alien themed deck, so it's only right. For Justice Cobalt, because it's just fun to see people's faces when you check a critical trigger on them in a deck that's mostly stands. For the Dolphin, because sliding the Dolphin into the Soul to power up is always a good thing. And this is where the change comes. We're only running two of the Cosmo generic gray, uh, Grade 0 5000, because in Set 8, uh, the Monster version came out, and that is Noise Monster Decibelon. Uh, we run two and two because that will throw the opponent's count off if they're counting their triggers. Uh, I'm heard that's a pro thing to do. I'm going to believe it because it works. Uh, from here on out, we move on to the grade zeros. Uh, once again, not too much has changed. Uh, as opposed to the Nigman Ripples, we have Dimensional Robo Dylander, who says if you can't move him from the soul to the KO pile or drop zone in this game, you can choose your Dimensional Police Vanguard and give it 3,000 power. So this is another card that, once again, powers up the Vanguard prior to the attack phase. Um, this is what you actually want to try and ride. Uh, you can ride Daisy. I would, per personally, this is the card that needs to be ridden for the Vanguard because you have no way else of putting him into the soul since you do not have Goyusha. And this does not have a Dayusha in it. So this is really your only dimensional robo outside of Die Lady. Still, uh, good card, 7,000 power. It's acceptable. We move on. Again, the same. We run four Diamond Ace. And if you're wondering why the sleeves for Diamond Ace and Karen Roy Daisy are in black, those are actually my, what I call the Zeton deck. It's a Zeal deck. I share my Vanilla 8, my Vanilla 1s, and my Dimension Police among all three of my decks. Though my primary deck is my Zeton deck. And Karen Roy Daisy, we run four of those. We run three Laurels because, again, Laurel's good. Just don't ever ride him. Dear Lord, do not ever ride him. Uh, stick him in the back row. He's not to be a booster for the Vanguard. He is meant to be in the back row all on his own. Uh, preferably with uh, Die Lady or Cosmo Beak. Because really, Cosmo Beak doesn't do any attacking. It's there to come in and give you power. We do keep uh, Wave, however, because once again, we do need Wave in the soul for Storm to be in 11,000. So that is good there. We do need Wave to make Storm. Uh, once again, his ability is still worthless, though. Uh, all your counterblasting, because this is the only real heavy counterblasting deck for Dimension Police, still needs to be all devoted entirely to Storm, save for one, so you can make Die go off. Again, cut for Cosmo Beaks because Cosmo Beak isn't there to attack. You call him in front of Laurel. He's just there to give you the power boost for Storm. We run four of them to ensure we get it. We run two Dimensional Robo Die Lady. She's a 9K. She can swing for us. Alternatively, you can run... Uh, the I you'll have to forgive me I forget it, he's called Twin Order I am not too familiar with my Metal Heroes I know Gavin's the silver one I don't remember Charvan or Shider's the red one but yeah we run the Vanilla Tenk you can also run the Vanilla Tenk in this as opposed to her though she is better since she would make them block since she is an on hit power up and we're back at our grade threes again. We run Storm. Storm gets bigger if you have Wave in the Soul. Good card. And finally, we're back to Cosmo Great. Run four of Cosmo Great. As I explained before, Cosmo Great is a grade three Cosmo Beak. So you ride him on the rear guard. You immediately power uh, Counter Blast two to power up Storm. Swing with Storm. Hopefully, win the game. So that's both decks. Uh, they are pretty good. The latter build with die in it is the more consistent and more versatile one because you are not restricted to uh, just the Enigman stuff. 
You do, of course, need the grade two and grade three, as I've already stressed. Uh, but die allows you to search your deck. Um, you have more trigger options to mess with your opponent's counting. Uh, you have more ways of getting power because you have Die Mariner. So that's the better build. Um, alternatively, if you don't have Laurels, you can run three of the Speedsters. Uh, Speedsters, a 6K, which when he comes into play, you can choose somebody and he gets 2,000 power to the end of turn. Um, if that's, he's only in the deck if you don't have Laurel. Um, that's really about it. The deck ratio is 17 grade zeros, including die. Six, 15, excuse me, 15 grade ones, uh, 10 grade twos, and 8 grade threes. Tune in next week, or actually in two weeks, because next week we are going to be looking at UFS for Let's Build a Deck. And week after next, we will be build, uh, building my go-to deck right now, probably the most devastating of the Dimension Police builds, Zeal, or as I just call him flat out, Zeton. Take care, everybody, and as always, please look in the comments for links to both HenshinJustice.com, the one-stop shop for all your tokusatsu news, and my gaming website, Total Justice Gaming, where I have news of Vanguard, UFS, and um, coming July, we will be doing Schwartz Weiss Let's Build a Deck stuff. Take care, everybody, and see you next week.